Hello, I'm Tolly Swift and today I'm looking at how much difference drilled and groove brakes make. So what I'll be doing is stopping distances in the dry, disc temperatures before and after braking, and I'll also be sending the car for an MOT style brake test to measure braking force. If you'd like to see the brake replacement procedure, please check out my channel. There are loads and loads of maintenance videos on this car and many, many others. But otherwise, enjoy this video. So this is the first test on the standard brakes. We have a 118D M Sport with standard brakes. However, the car is on M135 alloys with Bridgestone Potenza run flats that are relatively new and the tyre sizes are 225, 40, 18 on the front and 235, 35, 18 on the back so I will have a lot more grip than the standard models but we'll see how these compare to the new brakes anyway First I'd like to marvel at the fact that you can buy a 50 centimetre traffic cone for just five pounds and they're not they're not light they're a good chunk of rubber or plastic and then also wonder why i bought six when i could have got away with three but here we go also the tire pressures are 35 at the front and 38 psi at the back Brake temperature before the test is about 40 degrees on the face. And just under at the back. All unnecessary weight has been removed from the car. That will be the braking point and We'll do a 30 mile per hour and 60 mile per hour test and see where we end up. That really gives you an idea of the difference between 30 and 60 miles an hour. I thought that was a pretty good stopping distance, 30 miles an hour, but it's unbelievable how much twice the speed adds to the distance. So I'll get this measured up. So the temperature after the first test we've got ranges a little bit, depending on where on the face you've got it. Getting between 60. Sixty and seventy on the front. Not quite as much increase as I thought it would. Right, so I'm just going to measure up the stopping distances, and then what I'm going to do is duplicate the test with the cones already in position. Give myself enough room to get the cruise control on. So all I have to focus on is braking and just make sure that these are consistently the accurate stopping distances. So the stopping distance from 30 is just 6.2 meters. 6.3 meters which is one and a half car lengths S seems quite impressive and the stopping distance from 60 on my first attempt is about 28.2 
second attempt from 30 miles an hour. So I don't know if this is me being more prepared to stop. It's knocked off about a meter. So what I'll do is I'll do this a third time and call some sort of average between the three tests. So it looks like about a meter than a meter shorter than the original test is about accurate. So I will use the shorter distance. It's a slightly longer this time. We'll do another test and get an average. So we've got another test that's more in line with the first result. So obviously it's 60 miles an hour. A lot of the stopping distance is going to be based on how quickly you can apply the brakes when you're supposed to. And obviously the conditions I'm guessing, without even changing the brakes, that a lot of this test will be based on the grip of the tyres. And I do wonder how much difference improving the brake discs could actually make to the stopping distances. I'd like to be pleasantly surprised, but we'll find out when we do the next test. So on the standard brake test, the average stopping distance for 30 miles an hour was 5.2 and the average on the 60 mile per hour test was 28.83. So those are, the, those are the figures that we aim to beat with the upgraded brakes. So I'm ready to start swapping out the pads and discs. If you want to watch the video on how to do this job, then check out my other videos or I'll stick a link in the description. So that's the new pads and discs fitted all around. So now before I do any emergency stops, I just need to run them in for 200 plus miles, just so that the pads bed in and the discs don't get overheated too early so I'll get some miles on them and then we can do the new brake tests so I've got the cones set up as an average of the stopping distances on the original brakes so I'll just take a new temperature on the new brakes and we'll get on with the test So today on the fronts we've got 27, 27 degrees basically across all of it, it's going down, 26 degrees on the front, and 26 on the back. So 
So it doesn't immediately look like a shorter stopping distance on the 30 mile per hour test. However, I haven't practiced beforehand, so maybe same as last time, it'll get a bit shorter as I get used to braking at the set point. So I'll move straight on to the 60 mile per hour test. So a fair bit lower than the original brakes. So what we've got here is 26.3 meters, which is about 2.5 meters shorter stopping distance than on the original brakes. Now, I did suspect that if there were any improvements, it would be on the higher speed test because you can hear the front brakes lock up every time you hear a bit of squeal and obviously the ABS releases them. But I don't think the same is for the rear brakes. I think the rear brakes have got plenty more room to brake much harder. And this would add up based on the 2.5 meter improvement. So I'm going to repeat this test another two times for both speeds and see what average we get and decide what we think. Now the MOT brake test. So what happens on the MOT tester is the wheels lock up before you can get an accurate reading of how much brake force the, the, the brakes can actually apply. We did get an increase though. So the front brakes prior to the new discs we're showing 264 and 281 on the front axle and 218 and 230 on the rear axle. This jumped to 295 and 315 on the front and 237 and 273 on the rear before locking up. So th these are the figures before the wheels just locked up in the tester. This is an increase though, this is an increase in braking force, which can only be a good thing. In summary, I would say if you are going to be using the car at all on a track, then the brake temperatures will become important. And for that reason, I would upgrade to drilled and grooved. The price difference for, for me in this case, using a decent quality aftermarket part versus the drilled and grooved, there was only £20 in, in difference in price between the standard brakes and the drilled and grooved. If you're going to be replacing the brakes anyway, you might as well get the drilled and grooved. Now the stopping distances, it seems that over a, a longer braking or braking from high speeds the drills and grooves are more efficient any decrease in stopping distance is a good thing and worth the money if it's if it's only a small amount of money however there are other ways to decrease the stopping distance on your car such as tires now if you have budget tyres fitted, look, just look at moving up to a better brand or a tyre with better ratings. That will quite easily make the same amount of difference that the drilled and grooved have on my car today. However, I already have decent tyres, the Bridgestone Potenzas. Now I do hope that some of the information in this video has helped you. Regardless, I am 
happy to have done the tests myself and find out whether the drilled and grooved discs actually do make any difference. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you'll stick around for more in the future.